Our next presenter is Kenny Closser. Kenny was born in Novato, California, and has since lived in multiple states until moving to Simi Valley in 2005. He currently attends Santa Susana High School as a senior where his experience in clubs, including robotics and academic decathlon, has cultivated an interest in technology and engineering. His motivational leadership in these activities has also given him a broader understanding on choices made for the future, which he is excited to share in his TEDx talk. His talk today is titled, What Our Predictions for Our Technological Future Tell Us About Ourselves. Let's give a warm welcome to Kenny Klosser. All right, so it seems as though we've reached the interactive portion of the TED Talk because I'm going to need some participation too. So I want to start us off with a little experiment. I want everyone in the audience to think of a random playing card, just something from a stereotypical deck of 52. All right, so clearly visualize it in your head. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to predict what your card was, and if I'm correct, I want you to stand up. Ready? You were thinking of the Ten of Spades. All right. <laughs> so I expected something like, st like this to happen, but what I just did was important. I made a simple prediction. For all of you, this amounted to absolutely nothing because this wasn't any sort of educated conjecture. This was just an easy guess based on what I know about playing cards, what suits were available, what's you, what the odds were for me guessing correctly, and so on. That was the pattern I was able to use, but from there, everything else was based on luck. In reality, the rules aren't so simple. Complexity dominates, and we're all subject to it. Luck still plays its role, of course, but there is so much more to consider. As a result, predictions based on as much extrapolation as possible can lead to some interesting outcomes, and more importantly, insight into those who made them. John Elfrith Watkins, Jr was a curator at the transportation section of the Smithsonian Museum in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. In December of 1900, he contributed to an article outlining a series of predictions meant to come true by the year 2000. One of the most prominent of these dictated that there would be no C, X, or Q in our everyday alphabet. He thought that they would be completely phased out due to a lack of necessity. Now, of course, we know this to be untrue. We use these letters every single day, yet when we put some thought into it, we can see exactly what he was thinking. These letters could easily be replaced with letters such as S or K, which would serve the exact same function. So why have unnecessary letters in our alphabet? Watkins prediction in this regard was based on entirely reasonable knowledge, yet it is still undoubtedly incorrect. Other predictions of his turned out to be astonishingly accurate, such as one which said that the average American would be taller by one to two inches, which, according to the Center of Disease Control, is exactly within the range of growth that we've seen just within that time period. This is one of many countless advantages in the drastic advancements in health made just within that time and still being made as time goes on. Another such example said that, almost obviously to us, automobiles would become less expensive than horses as time went on, and automobiles would eventually take over as our primary source of transportation. According to USA Today, the average cost of an automobile is $31,252. We know that this number can vary wildly. However, according to the University of Georgia School of Agriculture, the standard thoroughbred horse can run up to $35,000. While you might get better mileage on a horse, other advantages have made cars our main source of transportation, and horses have gone from commonplace to unusual. Watkins' article is unique in that it can be viewed in this way. It is easy to tell which of his predictions have become true and which have proven themselves to be entirely false. When authors and scientists are able to make more accurate predictions, we begin to view them differently. People such as Leonardo da Vinci, who, among numerous other accomplishments, saw the potential in studying human anatomy before the rest of the world are immortalized in our mind because of this. The same applies to Gutenberg's printing press or Babbage's difference engine. The science fiction genre is famous for its technological predictions, and the most notable authors are so largely because of they, the fact that they were able to see what technology would develop in the future, such as with Jules Verne's Nautilus. To contrast this, 
Most of these authors are only able to make predictions at the most basic level. The details are usually inaccurate. This is because, on all levels, predictions are always based on contemporary knowledge. There was no way for Watkins to be able to tell that the airplane would be invented to take people from New York to London within 11 hours. So he predicted that our average source of transportation to Europe would be super fast, versatile ships, which would take us there in only two days. Of course, the average person doesn't read 20,000 leagues under the sea on a daily basis, but we do rely on more mundane predictions. This is the weather. When looked at more closely, we realize that these illuminate on a quality that we have, a fascination for the future. We take time out of our day, every single day, to look at the weather, stand in front of the television, read the newspaper, anything that we can to see how our physical environment might change in the near future. This is also the stock market. The investor and the weatherman, their liveliness is made on these. Predictions are what they rely on to exist and what we as a society re rely on as well. Small changes in these can make or ruin an individual or in many cases entire cities or countries. As I stated before, those who are able to make more accurate predictions are completely immortalized in our mind. This is because <clears throat> we see them entirely differently. Hindsight is 2020 in this regard, and hindsight dictates that all the other inventors in Leonardo da Vinci's time were to be forgotten, but he will never be forgotten by us. When I was about six years old, I had a scientific book, which was my main source of entertainment and reading for a six-year-old, which the most fascinating part for me was the little experiments that I could perform every five pages, just stuff that you could do with, with household objects. I was only able to do one, however, before I was forbidden from them forever. <laughs> it involved pouring milk onto a plate, squirting some food coloring in, and swirling it around with a toothpick to see what the surface of Jupiter would look like. I did it, and I did it well. However, I decided to skip the plate part. <laughs> I made Jupiter on my bedroom floor. From then on, my parents had forbidden me from performing any more scientific experiments. Other parts of the book, which I remember extremely well, included the pictures, of course, because what six-year-old wouldn't, and one particular sentence which dictated that this book said that in the late 1990s, humans would be able to return to the moon by the year 2010 and would have launched manned missions to Mars by the year 2015. Unless I've missed something, I don't think these have come true quite yet. Predictions? as it's shown us, illuminate on a curious quality that we all have. Those who are able to make predictions so accurately show that the future is not built on desires. It's built on needs. And as a result, they embody the true natural spirit to advance above and beyond our station in the universe, one which may eventually bring the moon, Mars, or even Jupiter to our proverbial feet. The future lies in question. What we do know definitively is that we always will have hope for it. Humans are curious that way. We like to believe in a more optimistic time. A better future may not always be visible, but in the eye of humanity, we'll keep hoping for it anyway. Thank you.